If I had to choose between Stack Quest and watching Cool as Ice, starring Vanilla Ice, I'd watch Stack Quest. Stack Quest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to Stack Quest. Today we're going to talk about why dividing by n underestimates the variance. This stack quest assumes you already understand why we want to estimate population parameters. If not, check out the quest. Also, this stack quest picks up from where we left off when we gave an overview of how to estimate the mean, variance, and standard deviation. If you haven't seen that one, you might want to check it out. Picking up from where we left off in the stack quest on the mean, variance, and standard deviation, we measured gene X in five different liver cells. And then we collected data from more liver cells until we had the entire population of liver cells. And we used all of that data to draw a histogram. And then we fit a normal curve to the histogram. That meant we calculated the population mean, mu. The population mean, mu, equals the sum of the measurements divided by the number of measurements, which equals the average measurement, mu. And we calculated the population variance in standard deviation. The population variance is the average of the square distances between the data and the population mean. And the population standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Since the standard deviation is in the same units as the original data, we can draw it on the graph. However, since we rarely, if ever, have enough time and money to measure every single thing in a population, we almost always estimate the population mean. The estimated population mean, x bar, equals the sum of the measurements divided by the number of measurements, and that equals the average measurement x bar. And we estimate the variation and standard deviation. The estimated population variance is the sum of the square differences divided by n minus 1. And the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. And since the standard deviation is in the same units as the original data, we can draw it on the graph. We also mention that dividing by n minus 1 compensates for the fact that we are calculating differences from the sample mean instead of the population mean. Otherwise, we would consistently underestimate the variance around the population mean. Then I said I'd give more details about why dividing by n underestimates the population variance in a future stat quest. The future, the future is, is now. now. BAM! To understand why dividing by n underestimates the population variance, we'll start with a few simple examples, and then we'll dive into the math and prove it once and for all. In this first example, I want to replace the sample mean, x bar, with 0 and see what happens. Now we square the differences between the measurements and 0, and then calculate the average. And that gives us 391. Bam. Now let's plot that value on a graph. The y-axis on this graph corresponds to the value we just calculated. It is the variance around a specific point. And the x-axis corresponds to that point. Now let's move the purple line over to 5 and square the differences between the measurements and 5. And then calculate the average, and that gives us 240. And we can plot that point on the graph. Here's another point, and another. And this is the variance around the sample mean. Remember, right now we are dividing by n, not n minus 1. This is the variance around the population mean. And here are a few more points. BAM! Note, the point with the smallest variance, 
corresponds to the sample mean x bar. And this point, with a slightly larger variance, corresponds to the population mean. So, in this case, when we plug in the population mean and divide by n, we get a larger variance than when we plug in the sample mean and divide by n. In other words, when we use the sample mean, we underestimated the variance we got with the population mean. Bam! Now let's get five new measurements from the same population and see if the same thing happens. When we divide by n, will the smallest variance be around the sample mean? So, just like before, let's replace the sample mean, x bar, with 0 and see what happens. Now square the differences between the measurements and 0, and calculate the average, and that gives us 616. And just like before, we can plot variances on the graph. Here's another point, and another, and another. This is the variance around the population mean, and this is the variance around the sample mean. And here are a few more points. Just like before, we see that the minimum variance is at the sample mean. So, just like before, when we plug in the population mean and divide by n, we get a larger variance than when we plug in the sample mean and divide by n. So, again, when we use the sample mean and divide it by n, we underestimated the variance calculated around the population mean. Bam! So far, we have seen two simple examples where using the sample mean and dividing by n underestimated the variances we got with the population mean. Now let's prove that this will always happen. First, let's go back to the original data and the graph that we drew with it. The first thing we do is realize that even though we only calculated variance around a handful of points, we can replace x bar with an unknown value, v, and use this formula to graph all possible values for v. Note, to emphasize the fact that we are plugging in different values for v, I've modified the x-axis label. Now we can take the derivative of this formula with respect to the unknown value, v, and use it to determine the slope of the curve at different values for v. And when the slope equals 0, then we found the value for v that gives us the smallest variance. So let's move this to the upper left-hand corner and solve for the derivative. The first thing we do is use the chain rule. What? The chain, the chain rule. rule. To solve for the derivative of x minus v squared. So we bring the square down to the front. And then we multiply everything by the derivative of x minus v, which is negative 1. Because the derivative of x with respect to v is 0 and the derivative of negative v is negative 1. And that gives us the derivative with respect to v. Now we simplify by multiplying 2 and negative 1. Lastly, we can simplify things just a little more by moving the negative 2 and 1 divided by n outside of the summation. This is the derivative with respect to the unknown value v. Bam! Just to remind you, the derivative corresponds to the slope of the purple line. And we want to find the value for v such that the slope of the purple line equals 0, because that is where we will find the minimum variance. To make this as clear as possible, we will find where the derivative is 0 and the variance is minimized three different ways. First, we'll find where the variance is minimized using the observed data. Then we'll find where the variance is minimized for any five measurements. 
and then we'll show how to find the minimum variance for any sample, regardless of size. So let's start by plugging the data into the derivative. The first thing we do is plug in 5 for n, since we have 5 measurements. Then we plug in the measurements. Since we want to find the value for v, where the slope equals 0, and the derivative is the slope, we set the derivative equal to 0, and solve for v. Note, this negative 2 divided by 5 is the only thing making it hard to solve for v. So, we multiply both sides by 5 divided by negative 2 to cancel out the negative 2 divided by 5. Now solving for v is super easy. V is the average of the 5 measurements, which is the sample mean x bar, and thus v equals x bar, which equals 17.6. Thus, the derivative is 0 when v equals x bar, which equals 17.6 and the variance is minimized when v equals x bar, which equals 17.6. This is why, given this data, the value around the sample mean is less than the value around the population mean. In other words, the differences between the data and the sample mean tend to be smaller than the differences between the data and the population mean. Thus, the differences around the population mean will result in a larger average. And the larger average is what we are trying to estimate. BAM! Now let's go back to plugging data into the derivative and replace the data with five unknown values. These unknown values represent future measurements. We'll call this unknown value x sub 1. Note, even though x sub 1 is on the left side of the graph, just know that it could be any possible value. And let's call this unknown value x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, and x sub 5. Now let's plug the unknown data into the derivative. Just like before, we plug in 5 for n since we have 5 measurements. Then we plug in the measurements. Since we want to find the value for v where the slope equals 0, we set the derivative equal to 0 and solve for v. And just like before, we multiply both sides by 5 divided by negative 2 to cancel out the negative 2 divided by 5. Now solving for v is super easy. v is the average of the 5 measurements, which is the sample mean x bar. So, no matter what 5 measurements we start with, the value that gives us the minimum variance is x bar. BAM! Now let's see what happens when we have any size sample, i.e., a sample with n measurements. So, let's plug the unknown data into the derivative. Now, instead of replacing n with a number, we just leave it, since we have n measurements. Now we plug in all n measurements and set the derivative equal to 0, and solve for v. First, we multiply both sides by n divided by negative 2 to cancel out the negative 2 divided by n. Now solving for v is super easy. v is the average of the n measurements, which is the sample mean x bar. So, no matter how many measurements we start with, the value that gives us the minimum variance is x bar. Double BAM! Thus, when we divide by n, the value around the sample mean 
is always less than the value around the population mean, unless the sample mean is the exact same as the population mean, and that pretty much never happens. Triple BAM! P.S. Before we go, let's talk about why we square the differences instead of using the absolute value. Remember when we used the derivative to find the minimal value? Doing the calculus and understanding that this formula underestimated the variance around the population mean was relatively easy. In contrast, if we used the absolute value instead, we'd get a graph that looked like this. And since we have this sharp angle at the minimum value, and derivatives do not exist at sharp angles like this, then finding the minimum value is much harder with the absolute value than with the square. BAM! In summary, when we only divide by n, we underestimate the variation in the data around the population mean. This is because the differences between the data and the sample mean tend to be smaller than the differences between the data and the population mean. Thus, the differences around the population mean will result in a larger average. And the larger average is what we are trying to estimate. So, if you are estimating the population variance, divide by n minus 1. P.S. If you're wondering why we divide by n minus 1 and not n minus 0.5 or n minus 2, then you'll just have to wait for the stat quest on expected values. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, well, consider buying an original song or buying a t-shirt or a hoodie or just donating. Anything would be great. Alright, until next time, quest on!